Thank you for the invitation. It's my great pleasure to present on the Worldside Day. And my topic of presentation is about the overview of clinical mafia management. Mafia has been a very important element in eye care services, and it's a bread and butter in the optical industry as well as optometry practice. Now, in the past decades, we know that our services are mainly for vision corrections to correct myopia so that our patient can see clearly. It's actually one of the important services. But over the last few years, we have seen a number of key publications focusing on myopia research as well as the need for myopia control. This publication started from March 2015 to May 2016 and October 2016. The first one that kicked off the whole Morpia research was in March 2015, where the paper on the Morpia boom was published in Nature. In this article, they mentioned about the concern about the increasing prevalence of Morpia. They share that Morpia correction is not only important, but also the need for Morpia control as well. That was followed by a publication by the late Professor Brian Hoden and his co-worker. This is actually a study looking at the meta-analysis of various publications in myopia and myopia prevalence. And in this paper, the key highlight is by year 2020, 2050, almost half the world population will become myopia. And the world is actually looking at the number of those high myopia. By year 2050, almost 10% of the global population will become high myop, which is above minus five. And when we relate high myopia, it can be related to a potential ocular complication, where the risk of developing this ocular complication is higher with high myopia. There have been a number of publications looking at cataract, glaucoma, retina detachment, as well as myopic macular degeneration, where high myopia basically present with a higher risk of developing this ocular complication. It can be as high as 22 times with the risk of developing retina detachment. In 2015, the late Professor Brian Hoden organized a scientific meeting with the officer from the World Health Organization, discussing about the importance of myopia and uncorrected repetitive error, and the issue of myopia burdens with the risk developing into ocular complication. That meeting led to a publication from the World Health Organization in October 2016 with the title, The Impact of Myopia and High Myopia. And this paper basically describing the importance of addressing myopia burden and controlling myopia progression. And in 2018, Professor Kovin Naidu and his co-worker also published another paper looking at the productivity loss resulting from the global burden of myopia. When we look at this myopia burden alone, when someone develops ocular complication, for example, retinal detachment, glaucoma, or macular degeneration, it's not only affecting that individual quality of life, but also the community because his ability to work and contribute to the community or even the country will be reduced. So the loss of productivity can be as high as 244 billion globally. And that is the very scary number. And that's why we probably need to relook at this myopia burden. And the good news is there have been a number of studies showing that if you spend more time outdoor, you can actually prevent myopia progression to a certain extent. So there's a need to balance the close work and outdoor activity 
in order to slow down the development or onset of myopia progression. So how much do we know about myopia and myopia management? These are the two important elements that we have to lump together. That means we are no longer just looking at this vision correction, but we also look at myopia control in order to provide myopia management. And in the past, we know that we can actually offer spectacle lenses, contact lenses, autocratology lenses, or even repetitive surgery to provide vision correction due to myopia. Today, if we look at myopia control, we are fortunate that we also have product or solution available to address myopia control or to slow down myopia progression. That refer to specially designed spectacle lenses, contact lenses, autopathology, atropine, and because combined with outdoor activity that will help to slow down myopia progression as well. So all these are classified or named as myopia management. Now to embark on this myopia management is not a totally different examination process from what we are doing day in, day out. Clinical myopia management basically is part of the, our primary eye care, but with a few elements that we have to pay attention into it. Other than the comprehensive eye examination, we have to look at the evaluation of the risk factor, look at whether a kid is it amitrope or myope, and if, it's, uh, if the kid is myope, how fast is the myopia progression? And then after we integrating all these elements, we have to look at the potential best treatment for the individual. And then we have to decide on the treatment plan. So in the next few slides, I'd like to take you through some of the key elements in this myopia management. The first step is actually a comprehensive eye check, which we do uh, day in, day out for our pa patient, whether it's a kids or adult. But here, the most important part is actually the history taking involving risk factor of developing myopia. Secondly, it's about the visual function, particularly on binocular vision. We need to understand a kid's binocular vision better in terms of the accommodations and the foria, et cetera. And thirdly, if you look at refraction, we have to look at the measurement of the excellent as well. Because myopia progression is best measured by two elements. One is refractive error. The second one, which is probably more uh, representative of the monitoring of myopia progression is the excellent. And the third, the next item is actually the ocular health examination. So you look at a risk factor assessment. There are a few, there are a number of our publication uh, highlighting important elements that might affect the development of myopia or the high myopia. Number, the first one is actually NXCT. Generally, Asian is actually higher in terms of myopia prevalence compared to Caucasians. And parental myop, there's also another important element. If both parents are myops, chances of the kids to become myopic is also higher than those kids where the parents are not myopic. And we also know that the younger the age of a kid, the higher the rate of the myopia progression. That's why it's important that once we assess a kid, if we notice that there's a risk of developing myopia, we should embark on myopia progression treatment for a kid as young as possible. And the other important element is actually to understand the vision behavior or the lifestyle of a kid. So other than examining, examining the ocular condition, risk factor, this vision behavior is also important because if the kids spend more time on close work, like playing computer game, engaging with a laptop or a smartphone, etc., the chance of developing myopia is probably higher than those kids who spend more time outdoor. And that is also another important part that we have to educate the parents 
and kids about the importance of this outdoor on daily basis. Following that, we also need to look at if the kid is amitrope, what should we do with those kids? So we probably need to monitor, continue to monitor, especially paying attention to the vision behavior. And if the kid is actually a myope, then we probably have to evaluate, is it a low myope or high myope? And if we can actually develop a database, how fast is the progression in the past? And what we need to do if it's a sparse progression. So that brings us to the treatment plan where we can actually consider either pharmaceutical approach or optical approach, ranging from atropine, specially designed spectacle lenses, specially designed contact lenses, autocratology. All these options are now available for us to offer to our kids. And of course, not to forget about the advice on lifestyle, spending more time outdoor and controlling the screen time. And then in the past, some parents, they actually prefer their kids to be under characters because they think that if it's fully corrected, they might promote myopia progression faster. Um, in fact, if it's under corrected, there is a potential risk that it might stimulate a faster myopia progression. So the take home message is, we don't offer under correction, but we have to monitor the kids more closely. And that important factor to look at is if we do myopia management, excellence is an important element. So we have to look at not only just a psychopathic reflection to look at the refractive error changes, but also the changes in the excellence. So if we come across a six year old kid with myopia of minus 1.5. Is it considered normal? And what is the clinical management? Now, if we understand the norm of a kid who is six years old, we know that he or she should not be myope by the age of six. So any kid with the age of the six years old with minus 1.5 is not considered normal. We need to embark and offer myopia management as early as possible. So the role of optometry or eye care practitioner in myopia management is not just only on primary eye care services, but now we have to look at myopia management. And other than that, we also have to look at advocacy where we can actually engage with parents, school teachers, professional body or the government body to advocate on the awareness of this myopia burden. And the advocacy in myopia management, there's a few key measures that we can share with the uh, parents, school teachers, etc. For example, preschool kids should not be myope. That is actually a very important message to send or convey to the parents and the school teacher. And if the kids is still amitrope, or we call it pre-myope, we have to look at the risk factor and potentially um, their vision, their behavior, how they engage in outdoor activity and uh, close work. So this public awareness campaign is targeting on parents, teacher, and professional body, etc. And for us as an eye care practitioner, we have to look at this myopia management in the holistic approach. We should not just focus on one particular solution or product because every kid is different. We have to look at a kids, assess them, understand the risk factor, vision behavior, et cetera, before we decide on what's the best treatment option for the kids. And bear in mind that when we embark on this myopia management practice, you have to be evidence-based. You have to be based on all the published um, information to offer to our kids. And we also need to acquire the relevant skill and knowledge and to have the right equipment and tool to provide the best services to the kids. If we do autocratology, we know that we need to have a corneal topographer. If we do myopia management, well, ideally, if you have a equipment to measure excellence, that will allow you to monitor and facilitate the monitoring of the myopia progression. And of course, last but not least, always take the holistic approach in doing myopia management. With that, 
thank you very much. I hope this uh, overview give a quick um, outline about the Maupia management practice. And hopefully in the near future, we have an opportunity to meet up and to share more in the future. Thank you very much and all the best.